Welcome back, everybody. It is February 16th, 2018, 1.35 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All right, once again, this video will be focused on Tropical Cyclone Gita, which is currently just south of New Caledonia. Uh, some of the outer bands are actually touching um, parts of that south area and uh, causing... Um, a few issues. We're going to get into that, but first, as always, I want to talk about our temperatures in the U.S. Um, I hope the Northeast is enjoying uh, these little bit of warmer temperatures. I'm in Northeast PA right now. Uh, yesterday was uh, almost beautiful, and then we had a downpour later on in the night, which cooled things off a bit, but it was actually nice. You could, be, you could stand outside during this rain, and you weren't uncomfortable or anything, besides the fact that I'm getting over a cold, and my girlfriend... Caroline is also sick and stuck at work today, so I just wanted to say I'm sorry, sweetie, that you are at work, and you'll get through it, I promise. All right, so now listen, uh, this is not going to last, so enjoy it while it lasts. We do have another cold front from our jet stream moving west to east. It will get cold again. There is, There are some areas expected to get some snow possibly this weekend or early in the week um, along the coastal areas. Um, to be safe, I would say from New Jersey all the way up through New Hampshire, um, areas like that. But again, this is more of a coastal thing. Uh, there will be more rain coming to the northeast. But for now, we don't have any significant winter storms to worry about, which is a good thing. And for those of you, um, especially my buddy uh, down below, uh, formerly Norway Mapping, um, is now Norway Tracking. Um, he loves this type of stuff, I believe, but look how quickly the uh, Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico is warming up, guys. We are basically at a straight 80 degree temperature in all this color here. So, if you guys remember from last year, most of our hurricanes, if not all of them, until we get into the later months of hurricane season when they start forming down in this area, they come off of the west coast of Africa and then they swoop down this way and they follow this uh, western band, I like to call it, because they usually take the same path. They'll uh, form over here, become tropical depressions around this area, and then tropical storms, and then they will follow this western belt, and that's, and that's when uh, the pressures in the Bermuda Atlantic and the jet stream begin to play a role in where these hurricanes go. So I'm going to be talking about this frequently, at least until the season starts, and then we'll be talking about the storms themselves. But just to give you an idea of how quickly things are warming up, and the water is prime temperature for tropical depressions, what you need it, uh, to sustain these storms is 80 degrees, and that is basically where we're at in the entire Caribbean. And this bleed going in through the gap here, remember shooting the gap term we used for uh, Hurricane Nate was one of them. We had a few others. Um, hurricanes like to push right through this gap, and that keeps them alive. If they hit land on either side, it usually uh, calms them down. If you remember with Hurricane Irma, that came through between... Um, south of the Bahamas and then north of Cuba um, as a category 4 and 5 storm and had it not clipped Cuba right here and then made that northern hit towards Florida we would still be talking about um, the devastation on the west coast of Florida. Naples would be in ruins in my opinion. It would be similar to what happened in Puerto Rico with Hurricane Maria. So again, just to give you an idea of the water temperatures going on here, uh, we are warming up quick. I will not be surprised to see tropical depressions or storms in the month of April, possibly even as early as March. Um, my girlfriend actually predicted that there will be some sort of tropical depression um, on March 22nd um, uh, within that week, so we will see what happens. Um, I'll keep you posted on that. Um, also below, I'd like to know what you guys think. When do you think we will see our first tropical depression? Now, last year, our first one was in April, and that was the first time since 2003, and then before that, it was like the 1950s before that ever happened, so that's a rare occurrence. It didn't turn into a hurricane. It was a tropical storm, but nonetheless, it was in the month of April, and we had very similar conditions going on. The uh, Caribbean was warming up, which is usually always warm. It's when you see that water start to bleed into the Gulf is when the concern gets higher for these storms and the possibilities of them. Now, you can see along the coast here, the northeast coast is in blue, still very 
very cold water, but over time you're going to start seeing these yellows move into the coast, and that's what allows these hurricanes to ride up the coast and sometimes cause big issues in the northeast. So once again, we're going to be talking a lot about Florida and the uh, east coast of the U.S. and obviously the Gulf after what Harvey did this past hurricane season, dropping... 60 inches of rain, which is just unbelievable. So many records broken last year, but still not the strongest one uh, season, rather, on record. Still, 2005 has it beat as far as the amount of storms. Um, I think damage-wise, 2017 holds the record, but besides that, 2005 was a much more active year, so we're just going to see what happens. We're going to follow it. Now, on to Gita. Now, with this storm, uh, the patterns have not changed too much. Now, again, these outer bands are hitting the areas of the southern uh, New Caledonia parts, like we spoke about, so they are feeling winds and uh, storm surge from this. I'm not sure about any sort of damage or anything like that, only because the storm has weakened to 80 knots, which is give or take around 92 miles an hour. But what my concern is now is what it does as it makes its approach to New Zealand, which now looks like it will be the South Island of New Zealand that gets the brunt of this, and it sure will hit. I'm, I'm also almost giving a guarantee on this. And the reason for that is a few things. Now, here is Tropical Tidbits. I'm going to move through time and show you the pattern that this thing is choosing to take. Now, keep in mind, this thing, as it moves south, it's moving into cooler water. So it's going to expand. As you see right there, it gets bigger. But it wants to focus more on the southern island of uh, New Zealand here. Now, we are still a very strong storm right here. 966 pressure. Uh, the 10 meters off the ground readings I'm getting on Ventu Sky are showing 80 mile per hour winds at contact. So that is category 2 strength if you want to compare it to the Atlantic hurricane season. Now if you remember they were just recently hit with a storm. Again the name keeps escaping me. I don't know why I do that to you guys. I'm sorry. I should have that name ready for you. But um, that storm kind of caught them off guard. That was a very hard-hitting storm, and I believe this one's going to be a little bit stronger. So the coast of, the, especially the south island of New Zealand, need to really be ready for this. We're talking 80 miles per hour, 30 feet off the ground. So it may be a little bit less down on a ground level, but still, we're talking even in the 60s and 70s, that is very significant. And this thing is bringing a lot of rain. Um... And we're talking between February 19th and 20th. Now, I'm going to bring you to Ventu Sky here to give you an idea of the dates. Now, this is current right now. So, uh, Gita has basically passed, besides those bands you see, that um, are still uh, probably affecting the coasts here. Um, I will look into any sort of damage or flooding that has gone on in this area. We know what it did to the island of Tonga. And then Fiji got hit really hard. South Fiji got hit um, very, very hard by this storm, in fact. So this is definitely a, um, a significant cyclone, to say the least. So I'm going to move through the time here, and I want you to watch what happens. Now, it seems to weaken as it makes this turn. It makes a western bend, and then it comes back towards the east, right into the South Island of New Zealand. But what's interesting is, is it seems to get stronger as it gets into the cooler water. Now, look at that skip there between the 18th and 19th. Now, I'll back up to the 17th. Look how far it moves from the 17th to the 18th, from here to here, and then look at the big movement it makes from the 18th to the 19th. It jumps all the way, almost making contact on that day with the South Island of New Zealand. Now, if you see my cursor here, you could see some of these are 60s, but we have some 70s. There was an 81 there. So give or take, we're between 60 and I want to say 60 and 80 to 85 mile per hour winds on contact. Now this is 10 p.m. This is set for Eastern time. So those of you that live in New Zealand, you can calculate the time for that. But we're looking at a February 19th. It's looking like unless something changes in the next couple days here, it could be a little sooner, it could be a couple hours later. But nonetheless, this storm is going to hit New Zealand one way or another. Uh, so they need to prepare for this, especially the coastal areas. You can see by the 20th, it's already passed and gone over the island, almost looking like it bounces off of it, like it hits it, and then it seems like, I don't know if that's a separate uh, cyclone movement, or if it wraps around this way, hits, and then rides the coast down this way. It's very hard to tell from this image here. It almost looks like what it, what it does. It's going to hit, and then ride the coastline and come out this way by 
the 20th. And then by the 21st, you could see it's cleared out. And we almost have an upwind coming um, after that. So that's uh, pretty interesting as well. So again, I just want to point this out to people that live in New Zealand. You have a storm coming your way. Um, again, possibly 80 mile per hour winds at contact February 19th through the 20th. This was a previous image of Gita before it made it to New Caledonia as they prepared for the cyclone. Again, I'm going to look into uh, what kind of damage, if any, it did. This was a previous article. I just used this to show you guys the uh, satellite image. Excuse me of uh, the cyclone itself, which may have gone through a um, eyewall replacement cycle, which significantly weakened it, which is a good thing. We had that issue um, in the Atlantic Ocean uh, last year as well. So uh, again, we will get into these terms more and more as we get closer to hurricane season so you guys understand them and so you know what the people on the Weather Channel are actually talking about, because a lot of times they don't go into great detail about what these terms mean, and that's very important to know this stuff. Now. This is just a, a very nice formed cyclone. I mean, this is what you see. Uh, this is what we saw with Maria and Irma and Harvey. Just that that uh, very circular eye wall, the very dense red colors going on. When you see these yellow bands getting sucked in, that's uh, those are strips of dry air being pulled in, and that's when you usually see your eye wall replacement cycle, where the outer eye wall disappears and then it replaces with a new one, which is usually weaker than the um, one before it. So again, we will get into those terms, but as of right now, sorry about the flashing, this is the current water vapor loop. You can see it making that southern dip now. Now, um, the island of Norfolk, I'm not positive yet, but it looks like it's going to bend around it. Now, these outer bands, clearly, you can already see, are hitting the island. So the island will get some wind and rain from this, but I don't see any sort of direct hit for them to be worried about. Again, this is weather that may change. That's why I'm doing these daily updates on this storm. But uh, this is our current water vapor chart. Lots of water in this storm. So New Zealand needs to prepare for that. There's going to be lots of wind, rain, storm surge. Beach chairs will not survive this. Let's just put it that way. Anything on the beaches of New Zealand um, need to be tied down or removed uh, within the next couple days in my opinion again I don't like telling people what to do I just bring you the information and I let you guys decide on what you feel you need to you need to do um, I don't like going into predictions but every sign points to this storm making this western loop and then back towards the east and then now towards the southern island of New Zealand here is um, the closest loop I could get of what we're currently dealing with within New Caledonia. You can see some of these yellows are probably significant storms along this part of the island. So they are definitely getting hit with this storm. It wasn't a direct hit. It is clearly underneath to the south of the southern tip of this island. There is a little island that branches off of New Caledonia that may have um, experienced a little more of this storm than the actual island itself. But nonetheless, guys, this is a cyclone. I'm sure everyone in New Caledonia is aware of it by now, and I'm sure people of New Zealand are very aware after that last storm that passed through that there is another one coming. Uh, this is a current snapshot. I couldn't get a loop of New Zealand, but we can see some moisture right now. I'm not sure if this is actually a part of one of the bands of this cyclone, but you can see those bands beginning to be uh, seen at the top of this image here. And here are the current spaghetti plots. Let me zoom in a little bit here. And this is where they say the storm's going to go, guys. Some of them have it due coming up and maybe hooking back up to the North Island. Again, that's why we do these daily updates. Every day could make little significant changes. And the farther that this thing is out, the more of a change we could see over time. But now we're getting into the four and five days out range, which is... Um, Usually you can get those dead on after five or six days. It's almost a coin toss, but with the uh, the paths of these storms, it, this is usually the exact way they go. Now you can see here, when I was talking about before, how it looks like the storm hits and then almost bounces off. Some of the spaghetti plots actually show that, and I just noticed that now. So that was, in fact, what we saw on Ventu Sky. Let's get back to that real quick, and I'll show you. Uh, go back to the 19th here. So we have the 19th here, and then the spaghetti plots show it almost bouncing 
a little bit to the west. So that was a correct uh, assessment here if that were to happen with these spaghetti plots. So there you have it for now, guys. We're talking, again, 80 mile per hour winds could be felt along the shores of New Zealand. Again, the storm may not pass right through the island, which is a good thing. That means the outer side of the island may be out um, of the severe weather of this. This thing may hook and come this way, but then again, we don't know. There were some plots that show it coming into the North Island as well. That's why I'm going to cover this um, every day this weekend, at least as much as possible. Um, I know these videos aren't as interesting to the people in the U.S., but I just I feel an obligation to have to let people know about this. This is a very significant storm. It's done a lot of damage to a lot of different places. It's a long survivor, and it just looks to me like there's no chance that this thing is not going to hit New Zealand one way or another, and it actually strengthens before it gets there, even though it's moving into cooler water, which is usually against what we usually see. You can see here on the 18th, the wind speeds don't really break 70. You can see that as I move my mouse around. We got a 70 right there. But then by the 19th, the thing is actually stronger. And we have winds up to 81. And this is 10 meters off the ground. You can see right here. And again, I use the 500 meter uh, as more of a directional um, tool. As far, not for wind speed. Because 500 meters, no one really lives that high up. So we don't have to worry about any 100 mile an hour winds. Um, unless you're in airplanes, I highly... Do not recommend flying any sort of Cessna planes in the area of New Zealand around this time. I'm sure people are smart enough to know that. I'm sure they wouldn't even be allowed to if they tried. All right, guys, so that's what we have for today. Uh, those of you in New Zealand, I would just prepare. Make your basic preparations for this. This is not going to be uh, your basic thunderstorm. This is a pretty significant deal. And um, again, I will keep you updated. I do have another video I'm posting shortly about a small earthquake swarm in uh, Oklahoma. Uh, which was pretty interesting to see. I was actually watching it as it happened. I was up late last night uh, dealing with this cold and also helping nurse my girlfriend who is very sick right now. It really sucks. Um, we're not sure if it's the flu or not. Uh, more of a bacterial thing, we're thinking. But I know a lot of you out there have been saying the same thing, that this flu season has been unbelievable. So um, I hope everyone's getting well out there. I'm feeling better at least. Um, I'm definitely on the the other end of it at this point. And uh, that's it for now, guys. Enough rambling. I hope everyone has a great weekend, and I will talk to you soon, probably in the next couple hours. All right. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.